Hello, mixtresses and mixters. This is Mixtress Ray, and you're watching Mixtress Video. Um, so today, I'm going to do a pick a pile reading. This is sort of going to be a Gemini season pick a pile reading. So choose, like while I'm lighting the incense and clearing and all that fun shit, choose. Oh, and like I think the specific goal of this reading, like you can tell from the title, so you probably don't need me to explain it, is kind of healing from trauma because as I am recording this it is 5 25 p.m on world goth day May 22nd 2021 um, this reading will be a timeless reading though so if you come upon it you know way in the future then hey you were meant to come upon it today it's all good but for me personally as I'm recording this I am purposefully recording this video at the exact 10 year anniversary of a traumatic event that happened in my life. So check the Powerpuff Girls watch. <laughs> I guess I need to go on the other side of the tripod to show you properly. Here we go. It is 525 and when the big hand hits here, it will be 10 years since a tornado completely destroyed my hometown that I live in. So I've been wanting to do something symbolic at the moment. Um, so here we are. <laughs> I don't know what pile we'll be in. I probably won't call attention to the moment. But um, yeah, anyway, so your task, you don't have to give a shit at all about my own personal trauma. But your task is to choose based on the goddess which pile you're drawn to okay so now i'm gonna light the incense and all that good junk we need a candle too though don't we okay let's see we need a healing candle i personally associate rose quartz with healing so i'm gonna go with get out my little rose quartz heart two and then I'm going to use a rose quartz or rose quartz. I'm going to use a pink candle. And we're just going to like set your own intentions for what you want out of this reading. And it doesn't have to be that you're healing from trauma just to like look at this, just to enjoy this pick a pile reading. My card of the day is Six of Swords, which I think is really perfect for this particular day in my life. I'm gonna spray some clearing spray. Get some extra today. Extra clearing. Okay. I just really mostly I just want some healing you know I want to shed the hypervigilance that comes from PTSD and you know items like items feelings like that okay what else can we do here oh yeah <laughs> incense duh Let's use some spiritual guide incense today <clears throat> Okay, I have actually like I picked a bunch of cards today. Like I think every reading is gonna have. I mean, it's a pretty healthy stack. I usually don't pick this many cards in a pick a pile reading, and I have not looked at any of them beforehand. So let's get into it. Let's go ahead and start with the Shakti pile. So 
So we're gonna put her up here. Maybe we'll even like prop her up a little tiny bit. Okay, from Stunning Tarot, we have the Hierophant. From Goth Mancy, because hey, it's World Goth Day as I record this. We have the Six of Pentacles. From the um, Oracle of the Strange Forest, we have Tree Frog with Conformity. From the Oneromancy deck, we have Dwellings. From just a Rider Waite Smith deck, we have Seven of Swords and the Devil. And then from the Everyday Witch Oracle, we have Accept Love. I'm actually gonna, like, I might actually just zoom down in. I thought I had more cards than I did, so I zoomed way out. But that's cool. You guys don't care if I fuck with the tripod, do you? Why does the angle look so weird? <laughs> Doesn't it look weird? Why does it look weird? what you're here for that's what you come come to youtube for to watch someone sh set up the tripod shot sorry guys okay so what are the themes that we have here we have two major arcana cards devil and hierophant except love is a fire element tree frog how, how would you put into an element tree frog because that's kind of water and air because he hangs out in a tree but he's also a frog so that means he likes water too right i don't know maybe that's toads um dwellings we've got sort of like water and earth here air energy is our keyword on the goddess card and conformity is the keyword on tree frog i added the keywords in this deck by the way those aren't normally on the cards so, okay, I think there's a feeling of rigidness going on with, I need to take my, I'm wearing bat ears and they keep like bumping into the tripods. I'm going to take them off, but here they are. Not that you were going to see them anyway, but whatever. It's World Goth Day. Okay. There's definitely a balancing out of energy after a period of rigidness. That's what I'm seeing. I'm almost seeing like the devil and the seven of swords as being like a good thing to sort of break you out of the monotony. Like there's just sort of a need for spontaneity, but there's not a sense of urgency here. I don't feel, I think, okay. For those of you that picked pile one slash Shakti energy pile, I feel like you're coming out of a period of conformity. I feel like for you, whatever trauma that you dealt with, the way that you reacted to it was by trying to blend in with everyone else and trying to maybe even like in a religious sense too, like almost like you tried to join, maybe you tried to join a church or maybe you tried to join some sort of community that has rigid rules and you tried to blend in with them and either the trauma happened within that structure so a trauma happened because of that i mean for a lot of people watching this reading it might be that religion itself trapped you and your specific trauma has to do with religion like the religion that you grew up in or and you're just learning through just everyday life now you're learning how to, like, your way of breaking out of that is almost like to be bad. Um, I don't really see that, like, what you are actually doing is being bad. <laughs> but it's, it's a way that you're reclaiming yourself. It's a way that you are personally realigning your chakras um, and getting back to yourself. Because this is a person right here that is, like, 
fully aligned with themselves, you know, like all they're, they're humming on all cylinders, you know, there's a vibration to this card. So if you chose this, it either chose this pile, it means that either you're drawn to that and you're ready for that in your life or you're already there. Like, yeah, I just feel like there's a balancing out that is currently happening with you and it's because you're choosing to break outside of the box that you have been in for so long. And I feel like it has also something to do with where you live, like maybe you're just now able to move out of your parents' house and with that you're able to sort of express yourself in a new way and they don't have to know what you're doing right now. Like for, for anyone that needs to hear that specifically, whoever it is that you feel like an obligation to update about what you're doing and what you're going through and who you are now, you don't, you don't have, they don't have to know. I mean, if you feel comfortable telling them, if you want to invite them in on who you are now, do it. But if you don't want to, if you're not ready, if you don't, then don't. Sort of the, the accept love is kind of like what you enjoy in your life and the love, how it manifests to you. Like what is your personal joy? What is your personal, um, like passion, like what lights you up, that's the path to follow. And what lights you up is not this like pressure to conform and pressure to live within a certain structure of ideals. Like as long as you're not hurting anybody else, choose that devil path for a little while. See how it feels. Have your own personal rum springer, you know? I just feel like this is very much in order to heal from your trauma, your trauma came from rigidity. Your trauma came from structure. Your trauma came from a world that was too rigid and you don't fit in that box. You do not fit in that box. You are more than the container that you live in. If that makes sense, like, Yeah, I just feel there's even like an association with a place for me, like whatever your personal trauma in your life is that you're healing from, it was tied to a specific place. And you either are already breaking out of that or you already know that you need to. And this is sort of your, your reminder that yes, you do need to get out of this place. Like, not to say that you can't heal from trauma wherever you are, but it's going to be a key part of your journey. Okay, I feel like that's a pretty, that's a weird, I feel like that might be weird to like look at these particular cards and get that answer, but hopefully that resonated with somebody. Hopefully it resonated with all of you that picked this pile. Okay, let's go to the, I hope this was pile two. I can't remember which pile was where but I think Sekhmet was the second one. So Sekhmet is, it's sort of sacred anger is how I think of it. Anger and rage, sacred anger and rage. And then from the, you got a little bit more cards than the last pile did. From the stunning tarot, you got King of Swords and the world. From Goth Mancy, <laughs> you got the world and the Empress. I'm just put these two worlds next to each other. How about that? From the um, Oracle of Strange Forest, you got Chipmunk hoarding. From the Oneromancy Oracle. You got World of Dreams and Dancing. Hello. <laughs> the World card is all about, like, it's the World Dancer. You know, she's a dancer in, like, the traditional tarot deck. From the Smith Weight, you got the Eight of Pentacles. 
I might actually want to move that over here. From the Everyday Witch Oracle, you got Fire Magic. So I feel like for some of you, like especially those of you that clicked on this particular reading because you specifically want to hear about healing from trauma personally in your own life, the way that you're doing it is working your ass off and kind of hoarding your resources. I think for, for a few of you, you're hoarding your resources because... You're going to get up and go. But for a lot of you, you're, some of the hoarding is... I mean, I don't see really any warnings here. So I don't think this is for a lot of you. But just ask yourself personally, if you chose this reading, are you... Are all of the things that you've been acquiring in your life, are they useful? Or are they just piling up? Like, for example, today I'm reminded of, there's this, I mean, there's lots of places like this, but there's this one house that I, um, we go by a lot on our way home from, you know, being out in town or whatever. And they have a really pretty house and it's actually a really big house, but they have like a screened in porch. And so you can see what's, you know, whenever you can see onto people's porches, you can see what they have on their porches. And their screened-in porch is just absolutely packed full of stuff. They have this super nice little out, you know, partially outdoor, like I'd love to have a screened-in porch area. And they have it, they can't use it to just sit and read and enjoy the no mosquito nights. I would love to have that. And they have that. They have this gorgeous screened-in porch, but it's completely filled with crap. I don't even know if they have anywhere to sit in there. I, there are, I don't think this is for everyone that chose this pile, but if you identify with that in some way, um, it just may be time to kind of confront your relationship to the things that you have in your life. No one else can tell you what's useful and what's not because, so whatever you actually have in your life that is useful keep it by all means. But if it's not useful, if it's one of those, well, maybe someday I'll need it, but I haven't used it in five years or more, maybe it's time to let it go because maybe the trade-off could be using a screened in porch, for example. I mean, that's very specific, but you know what I'm saying. Um, but I feel like overall, we're just looking at you have done the work. It's time to celebrate. You have used you have confronted some big truths. You have used your sacred anger and rage. And you've, I'm just really getting the impression that for most of you guys, you took this, you took your own healing into your life. You took it into your own hands and you made it happen. You know, this is showing like harnessing that energy, harnessing that fire magic. Um, by the way, it is 544. So that is the exact time that a very traumatic event happened in my hometown. And a lot of things happened because of that for me personally. And it's a sunny, gorgeous day outside. It's very humid, but I am right now personally passing the moment that a very traumatic event happened in my life. 10 years ago. Okay. I, I think that means that this pile might be for me as well. <laughs> I hope, I hope it is because I'm seeing very positive things here. I'm seeing that you're at the end of this healing journey. You have done the work. You have taken control of your life. You have harnessed your own personal creativity and you have faced all the truths that you need to face in your life. And you're there. Um, also, for those of you that need this particular message, since this Oracle deck, the Oneromancy Oracle, is um, it's about divination through dreams. So if you, your world of dreams 
could be very significant. For some of you watching this, like, you have a very rich dreamscape. And this is, especially its proximity to, like, the fire card here, um, I feel like for some of you, some good advice for you is to pay more attention to your dreams and maybe use some of your own personal dreamscape to create some kind of art whether that be like writing a book or maybe you're making like visual art from f like figures that show up in your dreams um yeah but i just get i get such a oh my god you know what i never noticed this before but this empress has like this like Kabbalah tree of life situation happening and this little egg that she's holding. I've also like, what's the deal with the Libra symbol being on the Empress card? Because the Empress is a, is she a Taurus? No, Empress is Venus, I guess. So I guess Libra is ruled by Venus. Love this Empress card. This is supposed to be Kate Bush, I think. It doesn't really look like her, but the song inspiration for this particular card is Kate Bush. So, anyway, I'm I'm not getting specific messages here. I think like the sort of like the way through if you still if you are someone that picked this pile and you still feel like you're really in your trauma, you're still dealing with PTSD, you're still dealing with a lot of anxiety surrounding the trauma that you've dealt with in your life. This is saying you're actually a little bit more healed than you think you are, is what I'm getting from this. And, and if that's not reassuring to you, some advice to help you get through what you are still going through is to really lose yourself in your creative endeavors you know hone your craft get better at the things that you love to do and dance really take some time in your life to make sure to remind yourself not to take life too seriously so any moment you can take to really feel the joy of life do it, be it, love it, and make sure that your anger, I mean, I think your particular anger and rage is justified, and I think you're funneling it into a good place. For some of you, maybe you haven't quite found the creative outlet for your sacred anger and rage, but you'll get there. Just keep following that bliss, you know? because you're closer than you think. Okay. I like that. This is like, I'm approaching, sorry guys, I don't know why I decided to like relive my trauma from 10 years ago as I'm doing a reading, but you know what? I'm going to go with it because this is a real moment. <laughs> um, I am approaching the moment my clock on next to my kitchen table as this tornado was ripping through my home, stopped about, about here. Like in another minute or two, it would have stopped. Which I still have that clock, actually. The glass is gone, but I still use it. Um, okay. Third pile, if you chose, Corn Woman Nourishment as your pile. From the Stunning Tarot. You got the Ten of Wands, beautiful cat. From the Gothmancy Tarot, you got Three of Swords and Two of Pentacles. From the Oracle of the Strange Forest, you got Sasquatch, Mystery. From the Oneromancy Oracle, you got Falling. From the Smith Waite Tarot, you got the Two of Swords. Two Libra cards, Two of Swords and Three of Swords. From the Everyday Witch Oracle, you got Cleansing Body and Spirit. You know what's always bugged me about this card? I really like it overall, but why aren't these candles lit? 
Don't you think if you were taking this kind of ritual bath that you would have lit those little candles in the corner? Come on. I almost want to, maybe I can add it in myself. Find some sort of like orange and yellow Sharpie or something. Yeah, I need to do that. Okay, that needs to happen. <laughs> okay. So for you guys, as far as like healing your own personal trauma, I think you're still really in it. You're still really in it. You're feeling overwhelmed. You still don't, there's a certain level of what you're going through that you haven't completely uncovered yet. I think that's what that mystery, the Sasquatch is doing here. And I think you chose Corn Woman because you really want nourishment. For some of you, for some of you, you're, it's, hmm, I don't know exactly how I want to word this. For some of you, your relationship to food still needs to be healed. So yeah, I just want to give you, give you a little bit of validation and space on that, that like, it's okay that you're not there yet. It's okay to, God, this is so cheesy, but you know what came up in my head? It's okay to make U-turns as in Y-O-U. It's okay if you fall off the wagon. It You can always get back on it, you know? Like, I'm not saying it's okay if you're thinking about falling off the wagon. I'm just saying if you have and you're feeling really guilty about that, if you've literally fallen off the wagon of whatever your personal recovery from addiction is. It's okay. You can, you can get back to it. The presence of the two of pentacles and the 10 of wands tells me that even if you don't believe it, you can handle what you've gone through. You can handle it. Not like, I don't want to Sometimes I say whenever, like, everything happens to you for a reason, that kind of shit can be triggering sometimes because it's not like I don't ever want to come across as being somebody that says everything happens for a reason because sometimes that can be interpreted as it's okay that something terrible happened to you. It is not okay that something terrible happened to you. It is not okay that someone took advantage of you. It is not okay that you're you're in so much pain it's not okay i'm sorry that happened to you but i guess not but i'm sorry that happened to you full stop and you are going to be okay the ten of wands is always a card about being able to handle it like maybe maybe it's too much maybe it's overwhelming but you can handle it and the two of pentacles too is about being able to handle it and you've got two cards here, two twos, and two Libra cards. So that tells me that there's, there's a lot of duality here. Like half the time you're okay and you're doing just fine. And then the other half the time you, you just fucking can't. And that's okay. And I feel like right now you're sort of in the I just fucking cannot category. And that's okay. Because Corn Woman is here to give you that nourishment that you need. And so is this cleansing body and spirit. Like, I feel like usually the way that I use the Everyday Witch Oracle is as practical advice. So really take this in. Whatever you need to do for your own personal, like, your, your own personal spa day, whatever that is for you. If you like to go get your nails done every once in a while, it's time to treat yourself to that. If you need to take a whole afternoon where you take a bath, no one fucking interrupts you, or you go for a drive, or whatever the cleansing body and spirit, whatever your own personal version of that is, whenever you truly feel like you've taken a step back from your life and you can see it from a different perspective, because that's kind of what this is too, right? This is my favorite tarot card of all time, is this. This is, in fact... It's on my little business card because it's a Libra card and it's really important to me. I think that you are going to have to get a little bit of distance from your everyday life. Step outside of the like 
everyday rut of just getting things done and checking things off your to-do list, step back from that and give yourself a give yourself a day, give yourself a weekend, give yourself some time to really like, you know, when you go on a road trip, I feel like I say this in a lot of readings, even if it's just like a little day trip where you're like taking, you're just literally getting distance from your life. And it's so, for me anyway, it's so much easier to be able to see things in your own life with clarity whenever you get that little bit of perspective. So I think if you kind of do something that's just for you, get a little bit of distance, you'll be able to truly see what needs to be cut out of your life. Because that's what that Three of Swords is. It's about cutting something out of your life that doesn't need to be there anymore. And then you won't feel like you're just falling into the abyss anymore. Then I feel like part of the mystery is you not knowing what it is that you need to heal yourself. You don't know what you need. You don't know how you feel. You don't know what you want right now. And that's okay. Like, forgive yourself for that, first of all. And take a step back from the grind. Like, you can handle everything that's going on right now, but you do need a break. You need a break so that you can, like, find out your own personal truth about what's next for you. Because I think what's next for you is going to be letting something in your life go. Because once you do that, you will regain some control. And you need to like, or it would be who you to, I don't like to be like, you need to, it would be who you to find a way to let that nourishment back in. You know, for some of you, it's it's your literal relationship to food. For some of you, it is other kinds of nourishment. Like maybe you don't feel like you deserve love or maybe you just are giving too much of yourself to everyone around you and it's time to figure out what it is that you need. Maybe this whole like Three of Swords thing is not as much about letting something go for you as it is about figuring out what it is that you personally want to let in because you're not... You're not getting everything that you need from either the relationship, the living situation, or just everyday life. You're not getting everything that you need out of everyday life right now. You're missing out on some nourishment. And I don't even know, some of you might know exactly what that is and you're like, okay, fine. I fucking knew it. Just shut up. I'll do it. And some of you just don't even know, like what, you don't even know how you feel. Like this is reminding me also of like, Whenever I first started going to therapy many, many, many years ago, I actually haven't gone in a very long time and I'd like to go back. But when I first went, you know, all therapy is, I mean, obviously it can be a lot more complex than this, but for me with that particular therapist, that wasn't the best therapist, but the, the hardest part for me was in the very beginning because he kept asking me, well, how do you feel about that? Well, how do you feel about that? Well, how do you feel about that? And I literally was just like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel. And I'd get really, really, really fucking sweaty because I had no idea how I was feeling about things. And that was the first big hurdle in therapy is that I had to hone. I had to start paying attention to my feelings in a way that I never have before. And by focusing in on that, I could figure out what I needed to do. <laughs> and it was all in first deciding how I feel. So I feel like for a lot of you, you don't even know how you feel about what's going on in your life right now. For some of you, you feel just like very out of control. Like you haven't made any of the decisions about your own life. My mom used to tell me, cause she ended up, she spent a lot of her working years working for her parents, my grandparents at the family business. And she always used to say to me, don't forget to decide what you want to do with your life because I forgot to decide. She felt like she had just stumbled into that and she just worked for her family and that she didn't decide what she wanted to do. And so like if you, that sort of idea of like, if you don't decide it will be chosen for you. I feel like a lot of your life circumstances right now feel like they, they're not choices that you made. 
So it's time to like check back in with yourself and figure out how to make your own choices for your life again. Because you're in some destructive patterns right now because you haven't taken control of your own life. So I feel like it's just forgiving yourself for where you are because what, you know, just try to focus on if, if you feel overwhelmed, try to focus on what do I need to do? What is the exact next thing that I need to do? Don't think about what you need to do like three months from now. Think about what you need to do right now. And for you right now, you need some time for yourself. You need to quiet everyone else's voices. I mean, that's what the Two of Swords is about. It's about blocking out everyone else's fucking thoughts so that you can hear yourself think. And that's the next thing for you. So just focus on that. Don't worry about like, oh God, I need to put my entire life back together. Don't think about that. Don't think about all the overwhelming things. Think about the next thing. That's it. Block out all the rest of it. Okay, I hope that was helpful for you. Um, I think that's it for me, guys. So thanks for being with me to help me get through this anniversary moment. <laughs> it was helpful and I have now passed it. So that feels good. Let's do like a little, I want to do like a little collective reading at the very end of this. I know that's not how pick a pile readings are supposed to go, but whatever. And I'm going to do, I'm going to get out a fresh deck here. Sasaribito Tarot. Let's just set this aside there. And let's just do like a quick little, like, um, I don't know, Gemini season <laughs> collective reading real quick. Probably just pull like three to five cards. What can we all do to just sort of walk confidently into the future? Okay, we can do lots of things. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. We got Magician, Wheel of Fortune, King of Swords, and Judgment. Wow, okay, a core card and then three <laughs> major arcana cards. I feel like this is very much a collective energy right now, right? Like we've been sort of like wrapped up in the blanket and now it's time to shed it and try to move on with our lives. Except that the current cycle that we are in has ended. And confront your own personal truth that you've got this. So this is for all of us. We've been in the cocoon, really healing from our wounds for a long time. But the truth is, the cycle has ended and we're ready to move on. And just, you know, be our own personal witchy, getting shit done, we got this, master of the universe, magicians that we all fucking are. We're ready to move on. Okay, I like that. So um, as always with spell candles, I will keep this burning for all of us until it burns out naturally. This is one of my thicker spell candles too. So it'll probably, by the time this video is uploaded, if for some reason you're one of the few people that catches this reading right as it uploads, this candle was likely still burning at that time. So extra, extra oomph and magic for those of you that clicked on this reading in May 22nd, 2021. Thank you guys so much for watching this. Thanks for being with me and hanging out with me. I wanted to do something that felt important at this exact moment and hanging out with you guys felt real. So thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend, rest of May, or if you're seeing this in the far future, rest of whatever fucking month you're in right now. I wish you the best. I wish you all the healing.